If you're hearing this episode around the time it comes out, it means I'm taking some time off after the birth of my son. I've recorded these ahead of time and will most likely not be available on social media for the next few weeks, but you can still get the story behind twice a week if you're subscribed to the podcast. Consider this series to be like a substitute teacher. We won't go as in-depth as in previous episodes, but we'll briefly touch on a number of different topics in each show. The series focuses on Billy Joel's song, We Didn't Start the Fire, and the headline-making events and people he mentions. Some content may not be suitable for all listeners. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind We Didn't Start the Fire, 1951 to 1952. Julius Rosenberg was an engineer for the U.S. Army Signal Corps, and his wife Ethel worked as a secretary. They met when they were both members of the Young Communist League, and in 1950, Julius and his wife were arrested on suspicion of espionage and passing on plans about the top-secret atomic bomb to the Soviets. Ethel's younger brother, David Greenglass, testified against the couple, despite his own involvement, and while he served 10 years in prison... Julius and Ethel were tried and found guilty in 1951, and they were executed in 1953. Starting with the development of nuclear weapons during World War II, which was known as the Manhattan Project, scientists began investigating fission properties for use in bombs, notably for this series, the H-bomb. Fission is the scientific term for splitting an atom. When an atom is split, a large force of energy is created, When it happens to a large number of atoms closely packed together all at once, it would cause a catastrophic blast. The idea for the hydrogen bomb was a small fission bomb would then ignite a much larger fusion bomb. And the first small-scale version was tested in 1951 successfully, followed by a larger test known as Ivy Mike in 1952, and more notably in 1954 in a test called Operation Castle. The Sugar Ray and We Didn't Start the Fire is not the band who sang the hit Fly in 1997, and it's also mistakenly attributed to 80s boxing legend Sugar Ray Leonard, but he wasn't born until 1956. The Sugar Ray in this context refers to Sugar Ray Robinson, who was a boxing legend who began his career with an 85-0 record as an amateur. He turned professional in 1941, and by 1951, His record was an astounding 128 wins, with 84 being knockouts. He died at the age of 67 after suffering from diabetes and Alzheimer's. Panmunjom refers to the site in Korea where the United Nations and Communist North Korea ended the Korean War. North and South Korea remained separate countries, but they had come to a truce that included trading back prisoners of war during the Panmunjom negotiations. Marlon Brando was an actor, born in 1924, considered one of the greatest actors of all time. It was his role of Stanley in A Streetcar Named Desire in 1951 that skyrocketed him to stardom. He received an Academy Award for his role in On the Waterfront, the movie containing one of his most famous lines, I could have been someone, I could have been a contender. He died in 2004. Rodgers and Hammerstein make a comeback when Billy Joel refers to the musical The King and I, based on the 1944 novel Anna and the King of Siam, and real-life stories of Anna Lee Owens, who was a governess for The King of Siam. Yul Brenner originated the role of the king on the stage and in the movie version, co-starring Deborah Kerr in 1956. The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger became popular reading among teenagers when it was published in 1951 for its themes relating to teenage angst and frustration. It was basically the Nirvana grunge of the 50s, and instead of Kurt Cobain, the protagonist Holden Caulfield became the epitome of teenage rebellion. The book has not only been listed as one of the greatest novels of the 20th century, but also as one of the most banned and controversial. General Dwight D. Eisenhower was elected as president in the 1952 election against Democrat Adlai Stevenson. Incumbent Harry Truman didn't even make the primaries, and it was Eisenhower with his slogan of I Like Ike who became the popular choice, especially with his background as Supreme Commander of the Allied Expeditionary Forces in Europe during World War II, leading invasions of France and Germany. Richard Nixon doesn't make an appearance in the song again at this point, but he was Eisenhower's vice presidential pick. 
In 1952, a widespread outbreak of polio caused the number of those affected to double, and efforts were put into finding a vaccine against it. Jonas Salk and his team at the University of Pittsburgh developed the first effective polio vaccine. And after a massive child vaccination campaign, polio numbers dropped from 35,000 in 1953 to 5,600 in 1957. And by 1961, the number of polio cases recorded in the United States was 61. On February 6, 1952, King George VI of Great Britain and Northern Ireland died in his sleep. His oldest daughter, Princess Elizabeth, was next in line for the throne and was crowned the new queen in 1953 at the age of 27. Rocky Marciano is another boxer who makes it into the song. He held the world heavyweight title from 1952 through 1956. He was the inspiration in name and fighting style for Sylvester Stallone's character, Rocky Balboa. Marciano was undefeated when he retired in 1956 with a win record of 49 and 0. Liberace was born in 1919 and showed an early aptitude for music and began playing the piano at the age of four. He was performing in clubs and theaters, earning money during the Depression, then later as part of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. He became known for his flamboyant performances and costuming, nicknamed Mr. Showmanship because of his flourishes being seen in every aspect of his shows. By 1952, he decided the radio wasn't enough of a showcase for his visual performance, and the Liberace show began. Even though it wasn't the hit he hoped in the beginning, a taping of one of his live performances was sold to television stations for syndication, propelling him to become a household name, and his show took off. Elton John has supposedly said that Liberace was the first gay man he had ever seen on television, and he became his hero. George Santayana was a philosopher, essayist, poet, and novelist, born in 1863. He became a philosophy professor at Harvard, and some of his students included T.S. Eliot, Robert Frost, and Gertrude Stein. He is known as the originator of the quotes, Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Only the dead have seen the end of war, and his definition of beauty as pleasure objectified. He died in 1952. Thanks for listening to The Story Behind. In the next episode, we'll explore the years 1953 through 1954, as referenced in Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. For more information, visit thestorybehindpodcast.com. And you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at StoryBehindPod. But I can't promise many updates since I'm currently on baby break. But be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.